The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host sitting here with me this week is the cat. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yes. Oh, my. That is Hello. A hell, that is a hell of an intro, man. Oh, uh, well, 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 she gives her best intro because we do have a special guest. We have with us, not only do we have a fellow video producer here along with us he is not affiliated with the site at least not yet there are going to be auditions coming soon so he'll have it crossed yes fingers crossed so we will see and but he is also one of my patrons over on patreon he is at the i believe it's the three dollar level where you know you can get a guest spot on a podcast once a month and he's chosen to cash it in right here on this very show yes catching in my contract yes (laughs) and and this guy's name is kara kennedy how you doing I'm good. I don't have as epic uh, hello, uh, an epic way, way to say hello as Cat did, but hello. <laughs> yes. So, um, so I mentioned a little bit you're a video producer. Uh, for for those who have never heard of you or what have you, why don't you tell the people about yourself? Well, I run three review shows right now. One is a show called Hipster Ninja Reviews, which people on YouTube have not so politely told me is kind of a ripoff of uh, Nostalgia Critic and Spoonie Experiment. I've tried to stray away from that in the last year or so, but I look at uh, film adaptations of movies, books, video games, and television shows. Uh, and I try, to, I try to put a comedic spin on it, but I'm not so good with the funny funny. Yeah. And then I also do a music review show, much shorter in length, uh, where I take a look at Right now, it's been a lot of punk albums. I'm um, extending a little more into indie with the next one, I guess, if you could call fun an indie band. Yeah. And uh, the third show I do is a recap show of um, a little show some of you may have heard of if you grew up in the 90s called Reboot. Oh! Love yeah. Reboot. <laughs> yeah, um, I originally did it because I wanted to see if I could do a weekly update thing which kind of went to crap after con bravo uh oh, no. in, ju- in june or july sorry yeah uh i i, I know the feeling uh so cons will do that to you yep. yeah cons will do that moving will do that too because i i actually i can i can relate to that because when i first was first doing some videos back in 2010 i used to put them out like weekly just boom there you go boom new video boom new video but then i moved to indianapolis <laughs> And it just went all to hell from there. Podcasts I t- seem to do on a good, good on a weekly basis. So there, there is something. Uh, but yeah, so, um, so yeah. Uh, is there anything else you want to put out there before we head on and, and do some more? Or, um, besides, c- go check out my show at Vimeo.com/slash/KiraKennedyHNR. Not much else. Alrighty, sweet. Now, now we, now we know where you can find him, and we can watch his shows. It will be stalk him, stalk him. Yes, everybody, go stalk him right now. <laughs> Please stalk me. I need the stalkers. Yes, we can all use the stalkers. Well, well, maybe not Cat, because yeah, I, no thanks. I have enough thanks. <laughs> yeah, she has more than enough. Trust me, I, 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 I see the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but anyway, um. Yeah, I, I wanted to bring up something. Uh, I don't really have much in the way of a shout out this week, unfortunately, because it's it's just been a hell of a week trying to get things together. Because end of the year is coming up, and I am trying to put together an end of the year uh, year of review year in review rather a stream stream slash live show, which I'm planning for the Sunday before Christmas. That way, we don't have to worry about running around you know, like after the holidays or whatever. Um, and with that Sunday right before Christmas, it's I don't think it's going to be likely that people are going to be traveling quite on that Sunday. I don't know. I've been talking to people on the site about it. I've gotten a few people who are wanting to hop in. I, I think Magic Steve is one of them. I think Seafarer wants to hop in as well. Um, so so we're getting all that put together. And um, and so, of course, this week with all the planning and getting everything else done, I don't have much of a shout-out. I'm willing to bet Cat doesn't have one either. You are correct, sir. <laughs> Yes, but what I do have 
is uh, I had found a, 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 a an article I didn't put into like the actual main news stories that uh, talks about the new words that are in the Oxford Dictionary. Oh, uh, God. Yeah. It's going to be selfie. It's going to be selfie. Or was that last year? It might have been last year. might be this year. Um, but they list – they have a list of words, and you can find all these over at OxfordDictionaries.com, and that is with two Ds, by the way, just, just – Make, just so everybody knows. Um, the first one I've got up here is algorithmic trading. Okay. That's a thing. Apparently. Uh, okay. I, I don't even know what that is. I, I will admit I did not research that. But one thing I do know and I and I don't need to research is HOT, H-A-W-T. Wow, poor spelling and everything. <laughs> yes, because as Linkara says, poor literacy is cool. Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, the next one is is a uh, shabby chick or is it ch shabby chic? Could be either one. But either way, I'm I'm imagining I'm imagining somebody looking like cat with like sh like shaggy hair over her eyes and everything, looking like looking like a personified shaggy dog. Are you saying I look like a dog? No, I think you look like a cat. Yeah, but you just compared me to somebody who looks like a dog. No, that's the image I have in my head when I see shabby chic. Shabby so chick. I look like a dog. No, you don't. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, dude. I know. <laughs> oh, uh, this, it's a long list. I'm just going to pick around. Uh, the acronym IDC for I don't care apparently is now in the Oxford Dictionary. Um, well, LOL made it in. It was bound to that one. We'll make it in two. Yeah. Uh, shiny bum. Shiny bum? Shiny bum. <laughs> you know... It's with with as much oil as with as much oil that gets you know squirted around on porn sets, I'm surprised this wasn't in there sooner. Just saying. But even outside of that text, what does that mean? To Google. To Google. She somebody will Google, and and while she Google's, I'm also going to see Silver Tail. It made it in there. The hell is Silver Tail? <laughs> Oh. Uh, looking it up, yeah, it's a Australian or New Zealander derogatory term for bureaucrat or office worker. All right, and that one is shiny bum? shiny bum or shiny, shiny arse. Shiny arse. That, that makes sense. I I just got a bunch of links about Kim Kardashian, so I'm glad you found something. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the Oxford site. Well, there you go. <laughs> You know I just would Google and regretted it instantly. Yeah. <laughs> so now, now you also know what Kim Kardashian's ass looks like outside of jeans. Uh, I, I honestly, I don't know. Uh, let's see, chile con queso, which is chili with cheese. It's, it's like that doesn't. It, does it really? I'm pretty need... sure people in Mexico knew what that meant a long time ago. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure anybody who's had even one year of high school Spanish can figure out what that means. Yes, but it's the Oxford English Dictionary. But that's not English. That's Spanish. <laughs> yes, that's why it's new. Uh, that, uh, if we were to have a discussion about all of the loan words in the English language, we would be here all week. Good point. Uh, here's one that I like to use: cool beans. Cool beans, God! Cool beans, people still yes. say that. Yes, that is. How is it just? That was now a here? phrase thrown around a lot when I was in college. That's a phrase thrown around a lot when my dad first got in the military. I'm sure. By the way, my dad is in his fifties, and he got in the military in the seventies. Do the math. I don't know why I had to throw his age out there, but oh well. Nah. Uh, another one. The... Thanks a lot, son. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> first you call that girl a dog, and now you're calling me out on my age. Yeah. Ah, well, let's see. Uh, crony capitalism, which, yeah, I, I think we all know, kind of can figure out what that means. We kind of bitch about it, oh, just about every week on this show. If not that, then we bitch about Republicans, because that's what we do. <laughs> okay, we bitch about more than Republicans, but yeah. But mostly Republicans. Yeah, because they're the ones making the news. Uh, they're the ones starting all kinds of crazy, so. Oh, yeah. And speaking of crazy, Obamacare is making it into the, the Oxford Dictionary. How is that's not really a word? It's a nickname for something. Well, well, IDC is not really a word. It's an acronym. 
Yeah, but Obamacare is a proper noun. Yeah. I didn't, didn't think proper nouns. Oh, speaking of proper nouns, they also have Secret Santa. Secret Santa. Yes, with with the capitalization and everything. <sighs> Oxford, world's slowest learners of words, apparently. <sighs> I mean, there's also a couple of other ones that I do want to want to point out before we move on. Uh, five second rule is also new, and man crush. Because why not? <laughs> because everybody loves Neil Patrick Harris. Yes. Everybody. Yes. Everybody. It's a scientific fact. Yes. I am straight and I love the guy. You know? <clears throat> uh, not to say that you have to be gay to love him. Just that. Uh, yeah. This 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 joke is over. <laughs> I am I am going to permadeath that joke, please, which is also which is also in the Oxford Dictionary. Permadeath. Permadeath. Yes, think heiress of Final Fantasy VII. There you go, permadeath. And I'll and cue the sound of Final Fantasy VII fans crying again. Which, yeah, I can't blame them. It is kind of out of nowhere, and it's like the the whole shock. Because I remember I never played that to that point, but I've seen the cutscene, I've seen the things surrounding it, and yeah, it, I, I understand the impact. Oh. Well, you're not dead until you're Bucky dead. There you go. <laughs> Very By that I mean not dead at all. There you go. Oh, so with all of that, let's go ahead and hit to our news, and our first one comes out of Farmington Hills, Michigan. A Michigan man says his family's 5,000-pound footbridge has been recovered after being stolen from his property in suburban Detroit. How do you steal a bridge? Let alone one that's 5,000 pounds. Robert Cordes filed a police report Wednesday saying that a 40-foot bridge made of steel and wood was stolen from his property in Farmington Hills. Cordes says he discovered the bridge was missing when he stopped by his property near 8 Mile Road with plans to move the bridge this week. He, excuse me, he planned to set it up at his catering business for taking wedding photos. Cordes says the bridge has sentimental value because his father built it decades ago. The Detroit News says police on Thursday found the bridge undamaged in Belleville, about 20 miles south of where it disappeared. There's no word of suspects. Who steals a bridge? That's a good question. How does no one notice someone stealing a bridge? I mean, it's like, did they... Are, are, I can't... This is... I mean, it's, it's bound to make some noise, you know. I mean, nobody's going to look outside like, hey, what's that noise? Oh, shit, nothing. Okay. Yeah. We're allowed to swear, right? Yeah, this is Detroit. This there, is this okay. Is, if, hmm? if I had to posture a guess, okay, drunk young people, crime of opportunity. Oh God! Like uh, maybe there was a crane nearby. <laughs> right, like maybe no, like because they had already planned on moving it. Maybe it was already propped up or palletized or like on a truck bed or something where it could already be ready to move and then some drunk people were driving by one night were like dude dude let's steal that yo that that makes a lot of sense and yet doesn't make any at all yeah oh my because who God. steals a bridge apparently drunk people we suspect hmm. oh god and and speaking of drunk people drunk people and then here's how I'm segueing this into the next one. Drunk people like to go out and eat at, at random places at night. You know, usually Waffle House, sometimes McDonald's. Denny's. Denny's too. But Denny's but, – and, and I would argue anybody who says Denny's is, is horrible food. I will fight you on that. <clears throat> but this is not about Denny's. This is about McDonald's. <laughs> if you're ever suddenly – if you've ever suddenly realized you're hungry halfway through a sermon and wished you could nip out for a quick burger to keep you going, you could be in luck. A Christian group in New Jersey is raising funds to buy a McDonald's franchise and is hoping to open it in an unusual location, a church. You know, I seem to recall another story of businesses trying to operate inside of a church. I also seem to recall someone flipping tables over it. Yes, that was in the Bible. Because <laughs> I, I, I admit, I am, I am not as brushed up on the Bible as I probably should be if I'm going to be speaking out against a lot of a lot of uh, the the Christian bullshit that's being spread around by Christians who want to spread it to everybody and force everybody to follow it. <clears throat> but in this particular case, I remember pretty well 
the Jesus got pissed. And like you said, he flipped tables. From what I understand, he also beat the shit out of some people too. So it's like, yeah, you're wanting to do this for Christians. Okay, um, it's not going to work. I'll tell you one thing. That's going to get awkward when it comes time to start reading the Easter sermons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very awkward. I mean, are you going to close the McDonald's? I mean, I mean, it's one thing. Okay, if, if you're worried – that much no, of... even then it's like they get to the point where they're tax collectors in the in the church and it's like some guy's stepping out from the mcdonald's with a big mac in his hand it's like oh <laughs> shit uh oh you guys were talking about that part about flipping tables weren't you yeah <laughs> although although i can see them i can see them saying you know yeah there's a difference he was he was getting pissed off at tax collectors he wasn't getting pissed off at people selling burgers that's that's how somebody is going to to justify this Mark my words. Yes, because, you know, McDonald's isn't known for ripping people off yeah. in any way, shape, or form. No, no. Mm -hmm. Totally different. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. A promotional video for the campaign notes that 3 million people leave the church each year in the U.S., and as many as 10,000 churches closed down across the country in 2013. Many churches are struggling financially and aren't bringing in new worshipers. Well, why not get the quality of, of your preaching up or, you know, Find something else to do. Find, you know, you, you know, if you, if you want to increase membership, you know, maybe have preachers that preach the actual word and not try and shame people and guilt people. Because I'm pretty but sure that's understand. why a lot of people are Big leaving Max. the church. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if it wasn't okay, on in and of itself, if you wanted to open a McDonald's or a Burger King or whatever in a church, in and of itself, it's fine. Where where I'm you know, where I'm getting amused and 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 a little little more pointing like ha 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 is it's blatant you're blatantly going against the holy book that you you say you follow, I mean granted it's nothing new but this is just the one of the big ones because I think everybody knows about Jesus flipping tables because of the goddamn tax collectors, everybody knows this and now there's a church that's going to go against that, it's like you guys. You, you, you know, I want somebody if they, if this goes through, I want somebody, you know, dressed as Jesus to walk in there with that McDonald's there and, and start reenacting that scene. Don't yeah, hurt anybody. Get, get him a anybody. whip. <laughs> Let's throw some people down some stairs. Yeah. Although I would say, you know, without without hurting as many people, you know, flip over a few pews, you know, make people get out of the pews and like get the fuck off the pew, ah. you know. That sort of thing. Although, if it's Jesus doing this, I think people are going to be running the fuck away, so that that, <laughs> that helps in their favor. Oh. So there is also, I want to say there you is... you got to admit, though, putting a McDonald's inside of a church would be the most fucking American thing I can think of. Definitely. It's commercial <laughs> capitalism. Well, the only way you can make it more American would be if you put guns on it. <laughs> God. Yeah, like Ronald McDonald with a, with a gun... Oh with lord! AK. Oh, C cooking up an American eagle, you know? <laughs> no! Oh no! <laughs> Holding an apple pie in one hand. Oh dear! The Bible in the other. <laughs> it's so American. That would be. Oh my god! I mean, it's all the worst parts about America, but still. Oh Except god! Apple Some pie. pie. Little apple pie is delicious, but yes, it the is. imagery. Yes, somebody needs to draw that. <laughs> That needs to be drawn. If somebody draws it, I will put it up on the next show. I, 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 Anyone I, with a DVD art account, get to it. Yes. We no. require this of you. Yes. Your time has come. <laughs> yes. Oh, so it also says, last line of this story says, the group is looking for a million dollars and has set up an online fundraising account. But it's still got a ways to go. So far, it has amassed just $78. <laughs> wow. We which means even the – you know, there's a lot of motherfuckers that agree with us, apparently. <laughs> that, that, is not, that is silly and stupid, and, and it's just, it just not a good idea. It's just – no. I mean there's plenty of other things you could put in a church to jazz up your patrons. There's got to be something else. You know. Literally anything else. A movie wifi? theater, a bowling alley. Mm-hmm. Literally anything besides a McDonald's. Yeah. And if you really want to provide food, 
or what have you. You don't even have to have a McDonald's. Get a Starbucks like every other shithead in the world. There you go. Hey, you know what? If churches around here want to try and put something in them, you know, you know, even though it is, you know, glaringly going against the word of their own holy book, if they're going to do that, I would petition for a Starbucks. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Especially since the closest one, closest Starbucks here is like about 40 miles away, give or take. Wow. That's in the yeah. U.S. where you got Starbucks on every corner. Yeah, I know, right? But uh, then again, Star- Starbucks thinks that gay people should get married, so they probably wouldn't put one in a church. Although, touche. like, the McDonald's Corporation is just the devil, so maybe <laughs> there is still hope for Starbucks. Maybe. Hmm. Oh, so, and speaking of Florida, uh, which, which, for those who don't know, that is where I live. I, I live in what we call the Florida taint. Uh, but th- but this is a more a kind of a more positive one, or at least I think it is. Uh, imagine encountering a childhood bully several years later and getting asked out on a date. That's exactly what happened to 22-year-old Oxford University student Louisa Manning. The way she handled the awkward si- situation is quickly going viral. You guys may have heard about this by now. Oh, yeah. Manning's initial reaction to being asked on a date by a man who, as a teen, had made fun of her weight and called her a man-beast was to decline. But then she decided to accept the date and stand him up, leaving a letter for him to realize the negative impact his bullying actions had on her as an adolescent. And cue the MRAs complaining about it. Yes, and and I I found this story. of A friend of mine had liked it on Facebook, and of course Facebook was like, oh, hey, your friend liked this? You might like it too. Well, in this case, they were actually right. <laughs> and in and, and true true to what Kira said, there are peop- there are usually guys that that are, mm-hmm. are calling her out and saying you know she shouldn't have done this. There, there were better ways to do this. And and here's the thing, she says the verbal harassment she received at school caused her to develop an eating disorder. And after apologizing for standing him up, a strong person there. Manning writes, remember year eight, eighth grade for those people, and not not eight years old like some of the people in the comments were thinking. Yeah. When I was fat and you made fun of my weight? No, I do. I spent the following three years eating less than an apple a day, so I've decided to skip dinner. She proceeds to call him and his school buddies out for other slurs she endured from them on a daily basis. Wrapping up the letter, she writes, I thought I'd send you this as a reminder. Next time you think of me, picture that girl in this photo, because she's the one who just stood you up. She posted the letter on her Facebook page, where it quickly went viral, earning over 11,000 likes. And the letter worked. The bully has since apologized to her. I, personally, applaud this woman. I think it's pretty goddamn awesome. Because a lot of times... Growing up, when you know you you have your schoolyard bullies, whether they're the more serious ones, the more tragic ones with the tragic outcomes, or you just have your regular schoolyard bullies that you you try to ignore, uh, and you both survive and you get older, what have you, you know, it's, it, when you get older, a lot of times it's like they kind of it just it almost seems to me like I'm I'm, I'm trying to word properly here, it seems like they, for lack of a better term, tend to get away with it. You know, for the rest of the life, even though that bullying, you know, even if even it doesn't have as tragic of an outcome, and by that I do mean like suicide, you know, even if it's the outcome's not that tragic, people still develop their issues and their own problems from it, from bu- getting bullied in school, and so for her to not only see this guy who used to bully her, and now think, oh my God, she's hot shit, I must fuck her, because I'm pretty sure that's what his mind was thinking, you know. And she's like, yeah, um, you bullied me in school, and now suddenly I'm more aesthetically pleasing to you, and you want to bang me? Really? <laughs> it's like, yeah. You know, he just needed to be reminded. Yeah, you bullied me, and you, you caused problems in my life. I am not going out on a date with you. In fact, I'm going to stand you the fuck up and, and explain to you why. Because I'm just not going to face you. And there were people, there were people in the comment section that were saying, "Well, why didn't shouldn't you just went in person and, and talk to him there?" Maybe she had issues with face seeing him face to face. You know, do you ever think about that? She, she, you know, some emotional issues. Yeah, if she ran into him, all of those things would come flooding back right there, and you know, it it wouldn't be a good time. It, you know, ah, uh, yeah. Uh, th- thoughts from the both of you. I, I, I require them. 
Yeah, I wasn't sure if you were just going to talk for the next 20 minutes or not. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Go, go ahead, Kat. I, uh, I really think this was quite brilliant. Um, I, I, I can understand people who are getting mad saying, well, you shouldn't hold a grudge for that long, blah, blah, blah. And it's mostly just people who are just pissed off because, you know, it, it, was, it wasn't a nice thing to do. But um, honestly, bullying affects people in different ways. And some people can get over it. And some people develop eating disorders. And some people kill themselves. Mm -hmm. And you never know how your actions affect other people, which is why the best thing that you can do is just be kind to everybody um, at all times. It's, yeah. it's, it's the most humane thing you can do because you never know, you know, what you're going to inspire others to do. And bullying is just one of those things that's so incredibly dangerous because you don't, you just don't know. Yeah. And, uh, and I think, I hope if nothing else, this served as a wake up call for this guy, because it's kind of like you said, bullies get away with it uh, for years and years and years. And unless somebody shows them that they're doing something wrong, which most of the time they don't, um, then they don't understand that they've hurt people yeah. or maybe they don't care. They, they need to be shown in some way that will actually get through to them that hey, this was wrong and you should actually feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. And if it takes, you know, 10 years, you know, whatever. Sure. As long as the lesson's getting learned, nobody really got hurt. Well, in this situation, nobody really got hurt. I mean, I kind of feel sorry for this guy. That, yeah, I feel sorry that this guy, like, is now going to probably be mercilessly teased by people online now yeah. for the douchebag that he was back in... You know, I, high school, middle school. Because he could have changed. You never know. Maybe he did, but maybe he didn't and needed this lesson. Yeah. It, it's it's like I say a lot of times, you know, if sometimes I'll do something that, you know, it, it, it might, I might say something like, for example, Kat, I might say something that, that just pisses you off to no end and it just sits there in the back of your mind and you really want to just, you know, run down here and beat the shit out of me for something. I would rather know firsthand, you know, you know, it's better to point ah, I, I am not wording well today. Use but, your words. Use yes, your words. Using my words. I, I, use I'm, your big boy words. Use my big boy words. Yes. <laughs> I am not using my motor mouth very well. But um, the point I'm trying to make is, um, you know, especially in cases like myself, sometimes, like you said, sometimes we don't realize it. And having that reminder you know, whether it's a verbal reminder or whether it's somebody coming and beating you over the head with a club, you know, some kind of reminder, hey, you're a jackass, knock it off, goes a long way. And I live by that. You know, if I do something that just is off the charts or whatever, that, that is like, um, dude, you're a little far there, you know, you know, help me get pulled back, I appreciate that. And hopefully, I, I like to hope that this guy is of the same way that he does realize i mean he did apologize so so there is that and, and hopefully he'll take that into consideration future on and, and he'll grow I, I i would like to think that after this whole situation this guy is going to become a better person uh kara what, what are your thoughts on this um well part of me when i read this story was cackling like a madman because i've i've had my share of bullying uh in the past um and it just was kind of cathartic to see someone who picked on someone else get put in their place. Mm -hmm. You know, at the same time, part of me wants to feel sorry for the guy, but you know, he brought it on himself. That's yeah. how I see it. I'm, I can be a cynical bastard, and this is one of those times I'm put, I'm putting it through. You know, yeah. You pick on somebody, and if some, and if that somebody come, and that somebody could come back to bite you in the ass one day. Oh yeah, definitely. You know? Definitely. <laughs> uh, now, now, our next one involves a group of people that we hope their their horrible actions will come back to bite them in the ass. In fact, it seems like it's already starting, maybe, a little bit. And they are reacting just like petulant children. Oh, wait, what group are we talking about? Oh, oh, wait, wait, it starts with an R, Republicans. Uh, Sounds about right. 
Yes. Following their convincing victory in the 2014 elections, everyone is wondering what Republicans will do with their new majority in the Senate and House. Well, their policy agenda is becoming clear. It will be unrestrained class welfare against the poor. The priority was made apparent over the last week during the negotiation of a colossal tax cut package. Senate Democrats and Republicans had been doing some low-key negotiations to renew a slew of tax cuts for corporations and lower and middle class middle income rather Americans, according to the to reporting from Brian Fowler and Rachel Blade at Politico. I speak, I swear. Then President Obama announced his executive action on immigration. Enraged Republicans promptly took vengeance on all the goodies for the working poor, as well as for clean energy, cutting them out of the deal and proposing a raft of permanent tax cuts for corporations, a loan worth $440 billion over 10 years. Cow Democrats, led by Senator Harry Reid, were about ready to go along, prompting a decidedly justified outcry from liberals. Obama then threatened a veto, and the negotiations broke down entirely. This is the equivalent of, if you two don't stop fighting, I'm going to turn this car around. Yes, <laughs> pretty much, because it's like, the Republicans, they are, uh, you know, based on this alone, based just on this story alone, the Republicans are acting like the bully, and the Democrats are acting like the whipped victim, basically. You know, and, and, I, and I do turn, use the term whip because it's like... The, they, they, they just like, oh, 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 we don't want to enrage you, so, so we'll, we'll, we'll do all this. We'll, we'll go with whatever you have to say. Bear in mind, based on this story alone, I, I know there are other factors. And and Obama is like, uh, yeah, no, you, you, you kids play nice. Or, or if this pushes through with all that stuff that was supposed to be in there to begin with, then uh, it's going to be vetoed and you're going to have to try again. Oh. And a few takeaways from this. Uh, first, it's yet another reminder that Republicans don't care about the national debt. Conservative carping about the debt is 100% of the time a rhetorical cudgel deployed with utter cynicism against programs they dislike for other reasons. When the topic is food stamps or unemployment insurance, they demand offsets to pay for them. Because we are broke, quote-unquote, as Speaker John Boner – I am not calling him John Boehner – put in a similar context. But when it comes to dropping plain loads of money on corporations and rich people, Republicans will casually blow a half trillion hole in the 10-year budget without blinking. Because that's what you do, right? You know, you say, oh, we can't afford this, but oh, oh, we can afford this. We can put this, we can give, we can give Cox and, and, and the Cox brothers and, and uh, oh, you know, we, we can put all this money towards Wall Street or wherever. You know, we can give it to the rich motherfuckers, but we can't afford to give it to the poor motherfuckers, even though the rich motherfuckers don't need the money. And in fact, you can take that money, give it to the poor, and it would probably cost you less. And you would have a better country for it. Yes. Yes, but that would be proactive. Yeah, which today's Republicans are anything but productive. Let's take a look at the last year. How often did they work? How many times? They're the party of no. I know it's a, I know it's like a, a year or two old thing, but they're, they are still showing they are the party of no. It's just no, we don't want to do it because reasons, because Democrats are doing it or because Obama Obama's a poopy head. Yeah. Or, or in the most racist of cases, because Obama's half black. Oh, my God. <gasps> No. Can't let the darkies stay in power. No, we cannot do that. Oh. Oh, shit. So, mm. Oh, goddamn. It's just Republicans are silly. And I, and I, I can't even go on with the rest of the article on that one. Uh. It's like if you needed any more proof that Republicans do not have a single shit to give about the American population outside of themselves – all you have to do is look at their legislation. Yeah. I don't understand how people vote for them. I really don't. Because they have corporations like Fox News to tell people that, yeah, this is, this is you know, they basically spoon feed, feed the people what they want to hear and hide the true facts. And, and I know Fox News is not the only one responsible for this on any side, I'm pretty sure, but they're the, one, they're the biggest ones out there at this point. At least from what I've seen. I mean, hell, my mother refuses to use Google to look up information when she and I have our talks and our debates. Which, which I'm sitting here, I'm like, I, I just, I just want to put my head through a window. 
Almost did. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. So, yeah. Uh, and our, our next one goes all the way over to the UK, which I'm really sad Omega couldn't make it this week because the, because of this. Mm. Not, not because of what's going on, just because it's the UK. Pornography produced in the UK was quietly censored through an amendment to the 2003 Communications Act, and the measures appear to take aim at female pleasure. The Audiovisual Media Services Regulations 2014 requires that video on demand online porn now adhere to the same guidelines laid out for DVD se sex shop type porn by the British Board of Film Censors, the BBFC. How about some shorter names, guys? Come on. Oh. Seems seemingly arbitrarily de deciding what is nice sex and what is not nice sex, the board's ruling on content that is not acceptable effectively bans the following acts from being depicted by British pornography producers, such as caning, aggressive whipping, physical or verbal abuse regardless of its consensual, uh, urolangia Euro or water sports, role-playing as non-adults, physical restraint, humiliation, strangulation, fisting, face-sitting, uh, female ejaculation, and spanking. Spanking? Really? Is, is, is that really that much of an... How, how, I, I, I don't even... I've got to say, you're not helping that stereotype that British people are sexually repressed. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not. Now, here's the thing. Okay, the last three on the list. I, I read the list a little bit out of order. Uh, strangulation, face-sitting, and fisting are are listed as uh, acts that the BBFC views as potentially life-endangering. Okay, fisting, if you do it wrong, I can see that. Strangulation, again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Face-sitting, only if you, you literally sit on the face. I've seen in I, I mean I I've, I've seen enough porn to know that you don't literally sit on somebody's face. You sit above their face. Seriously. That so so it's not literally a face sitting thing. Yeah. And and this is your porn lesson for today. <laughs> <laughs> now you know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. <laughs> Now, while the measures won't stop people from watching whatever genre of porn they desire, as videos shot abroad can still be viewed, they do impose severe restrictions on content created in the UK and appear to make no distinction between consensual and non-consensual practices between adults. They appear to be, there appear to be no rational explanations for most of the R18 rules, uh, Jerry Barnett of the anti-censorship group Sex and Censorship told Vice UK. There's, they, they, they are, rather, simply a set of moral judgments designed by people who have struggled endlessly to stop the British Empire, British people, rather, from watching pornography. Well... British Empire. <laughs> sure. I'm not well, sure I... that they have one anymore. No, they don't. Probably because of their sexual repression. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> More worryingly, the amendment seems to take issue with acts from which women more traditionally derive pleasure from men. Again, face-sitting, spanking, even fisting. Because you don't see a lot of guys getting much from any of those. You know, it, 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 and especially the one that sticks out on this one, the female ejaculation. If a female is ejaculating, you know she's getting pleasure. <laughs> so it's like if that's, if, if, if that's banned in UK-created porn, then what do you expect the women to do? And how do you know? Unless, unless it's shot a certain way, how do you know? How do you know if she ejaculates unless she says something or, or, or what have you? You know, you know, they have ways to show it. But, um, but let's see. Uh, to continue on, the new legislation is absurd and surreal. It's our Bilbao. You, you reach, uh, uh, this person, a dominatrix who produces porn with a feminist theme added to Vice UK. I mean, why ban face-sitting? What's so dangerous about it? It's a harmless activity that most femdom performers, myself included, do fully dressed anyway. It's power symbolic. Woman on top, unattainable. And and now we see another aspect of why it can be viewed as you know more anti-woman, because yeah, I, I, I can see that. Ah, so uh, do, do either of you have any any thoughts at this point? No. 
<laughs> Not at all. I think you've covered pretty much everything that needs to be said. Okay. So, so yeah, the the UK, the BBFC over in the UK banning all of this stuff in their in their uh, British made porn. I think it's stupid. Uh, if you couldn't tell, it, it's really really fucking stupid because in all of these situations in every one of those things the aggressive whipping the fisting the humiliation it it it, it ties into bdsm and bdsm if done properly if done with somebody you trust and 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 know that you're not going to intentionally hurt somebody you know you know and by that i mean you know outside of the context of what you're doing then you know th- th- there's no issues there's on the bright that, side, know. this could mean no Fifty Shades of Grey in, in uh, Britain. God, I was about to make a reference. I'm glad somebody <laughs> did. <laughs> Are we sure Although that this isn't just a response it. to get fucking Fifty Shades of Grey? It's poor literature out of the country? I mean, I would go that far to get Fifty Shades of Grey out of my country. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that would... And that, you know, if it was for that, then... I I don't I still don't know if I could be on board with it, but I could respect it a little bit. Oh, get a big gold star. It says you tried. Yes, very much so. <laughs> oh, so Christmas holidays are coming around, and and of course with Christmas holidays coming around, you you hear the people talking about the war on Christmas, quote unquote. Tm. Oh my God, what the fuck? Barbecue. Oh, but this story is not be not uh, not about that. That's what. That's the story after this one. This story still involves Christmas. One couple decided to cut out Santa and stockings this year because of how their kids behaved, and the mom's blog about it has racked up more than one million hits. We all know how the Grinch stole Christmas, but why did John and Lisa Henderson cancel their children's favorite holiday, even asking Santa not to bring them presents? They had been acting up quite a bit and weren't very grateful for the things they had, said Lisa Henderson. It seemed nothing could get 11-year-old Caleb, 8-year-old Davis, and 5-year-old Beckham off of Santa's naughty list, so their parents took drastic measures. The couple said they'd been fighting an uphill battle, calling their son's recent behavior disrespectful and entitled. They then proceeded to shoot their kid's laptop with a Glock. Oh, God. If they did that, holy shit. Uh, I'm dating myself there, but... Yeah. (laughs) I, I actually remember that. Lisa wrote about it on a blog post, causing a frenzy among parents, generating thousands of views. Many people were outraged, accusing Lisa of being mean and a lazy parent, and even calling her Scrooge. I can give him that last one, for sure. And maybe even the first one. Lazy parent, I kind of doubt it. While the others praised her for finally teaching kids about the true meaning of Christmas. How many times do parents threaten if you're naughty, no Santa will come? I never hear of any parents actually following through on that, said Lisa. The Hendersons say the money they would have spent on presents will now go towards helping others. When 11-year-old Caleb was asked what he learned about Christmas, he said, It's not about getting what you want, it's about giving. As for next year, they are already promising to be on Santa's nice list. So, this apparently worked. As far as we've seen. And from the sounds of it, the kids have been continually little shits. And whatever the parents do, it wasn't enough. That It did not deter them from being little shits. So drastic measures had to be taken. No Christmas presents for you. I'm willing to bet they will still have a Christmas dinner. I'm willing to bet they will still have family Christmas time. But the kids will not get gifts. I personally think that's a good thing. This is awesome. Yes. <laughs> you you, want a, more tra- ha- Sorry, you want a more traditional Christmas? This is it. You're a shitty little child. You don't get fucking presents. I'm going to put fucking coal in your stocking. Yeah. And, and and it needs to be coal. Do, you know, I know some idiot 4chaner out there is going to be like, well, why don't we put shit in their stocking? No. Shit is a biohazard that does not go there. You can but get it sterilized. In. Why would I want sterilized? Uh, I'm just saying, if Cards Against Humanity can sell you bullshit, anybody can. Oh, that's right. They did do that, didn't they? <laughs> 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 oh. But yeah, so, so Kira, what are your thoughts? Um, I will say this. Uh, originally, when I thought, oh, they're canceling Christmas for their kids. They're they're horrible people. But I'm reading this, and I'm thinking, like, you know what? 
if it works, I say go for it, you know? If, you know, I, I work in a restaurant where I've been lucky enough not to deal with very, very uh, loud and obnoxious kids, but I've had I've had coworkers to have and if it if it keeps kids from from, from like going batshit insane, I say go for it. Yes. Yeah, you know, I would almost suggest that for some of the kids around here with how rowdy they can get, but it's not it, they, I don't think they're at the point here enough to where to where that's got to come into play, thankfully. But goddamn if it isn't tempting. <laughs> it's it's uh. sort of like you can't really tell people what to do with their kids. Even if you have kids, you still can't really tell other parents what to do with their kids. Because everybody's kids are different, everybody's kids respond to discipline in different ways, and it's just a matter of finding out what works. And if canceling your children's fucking Christmas works, cancel Christmas. Yeah, there you go. Christmas is canceled! But they're, they're still gonna get off school, and like you said, they're still gonna have a Christmas dinner with their family and stuff like that, and and uh, maybe like other relatives will give them presents or something, like force presents in their pockets, like or something like that. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea of look, you're you're a bad kid. Bad kids don't get presents from Santa. Period. Yeah. End of discussion. That's great. That's fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that would be an excellent motivation not to be a shitty person. Definitely. <laughs> oh, and. And, and out of Memphis, this is the other Christmas story that I've got here. Uh, you remember like a few years ago, I, I want to say it was like Colorado or whatever, where a bunch of people got all up in arms because there was an atheist billboard around Christmas that simply said, no, don't believe in God, you're not alone. Either of you remember that? Sounds vaguely familiar. Yeah. Well, Memphis, Tennessee. The American Atheist Organization posted billboards in Memphis, Nashville, Milwaukee, St. Louis. Hey, you might have seen a couple, Kat. And I Ar haven't yet, but I look forward to it. Yay! And Arkansas, the aimed toward the in-the-closet atheists who are pressured to observe religious traditions during the holidays. That's what organizers say about the billboards, which show a kid wearing a Santa hat with a pen in hand. The kid is writing a letter that reads, Dear Santa, all I want for Christmas is to skip church. I'm too old for fairy tales. Is this Clara? Maybe. <laughs> oh, the Memphis billboard is located on I-240 near Getwell Road and will be up until December 24th. The, we want all the atheists in Memphis to know that you're not alone, American Atheist Public Relations Director Danielle Muscato said. The girl on the billboard is a real person. She's actually the daughter of one of our members. While previous billboards have been located in urban settings like New York City's Times Square, this year billboard... This year, billboards are located in more residential areas near schools and churches. It's just, it's just drawing the conclusion by looking at the parallels. We can all stop pretending. We can all stop dragging ourselves to church every year, said Moscato. And the location is designed to start a conversation. Well, considering we're talking about it on here. <laughs> we live in a pluralistic society, and I'm grateful that we have freedom of suspicion. Of expression, said Suzanne Avels, a spokesperson, spokesperson rather, for the Catholic Diocese of Memphis. Avil said that the same freedom given to American atheists is awarded to Christians who freely worship, but she says she doesn't mind the billboard or the discussion it begins. Oh my god, I like this person. Wow, wait, this is a rational person of religion? Yes! Catholic. That's, that's insane! Yes! I think the discussion is wonderful. What, my one objection to this billboard is the use of a child. That if we're going to have an adult conversation, it's almost inappropriate to bring children in as the visual, mes visual message, said Avilis. I, I keep on changing the pronunciation of her name, and I apologize. And yet another perspective comes from Andrew Bowie, founder of Lumen Zivitas, a mission to support... Zivitatis? Zivitatis, I guess. Uh, but it's a mission to support Catholic culture, education, and leadership in Memphis. He says the conversation can often be fruitful for all who are involved. Perhaps the very intent and commitment on the part of these atheists of good of goodwill, rather, might actually provide the occasion for fruitful interaction and conversation between me, a Catholic, and them. This has certainly been my experience, especially in the years I, I've lived in Europe. I have had extended conversations with and close friendships with atheists or agnostics, said Bowie. No matter what Christian, Christians say about the billboard, American Atheist says it hopes to keep, send a message to anyone who might be doubting their beliefs. We understand this is a very controversial subject in this part of the country, but it really shouldn't be a controversial subject because atheism is everywhere, it's very strong, and this is something that we would like for people to talk about, said Moscato. The billboard also promoted a 
promotes the American Atheist Conference, which is being held in Memphis on Easter weekend, April 2nd to the 5th. Now, with all of that, that's generally a good one. I disagree about her about her calling, you know, the the, the use of the child uh, as far as the uh, the uh, diocese lady saying, yeah, you know, the the, the yeah, you shouldn't use it for you should, shouldn't use a child for that. Um, I'm sitting here thinking, yeah, how many how many how many more religious or or hell even pro life billboards use children, whether they're unborn or stillborn or already born or what have you, in their ads? Yeah, um, yeah, and she may call those out as well. Uh, just just to be fair, so. So yeah, but I, I did want to take a look because I found this story on on uh, Ford Progressives, and I wanted to I wanted to look at the comments. I think it was the comments. No, it's the actual article itself because I added that in as a, kind of a thing here. And, and there is a quote. Uh, no, no, wrong quote. <laughs> uh, there, there's a quote from the article. It says, unfortunately, the reasonable people are being drowned out by the intolerant ones in their skimming of social media. On the Facebook page for WVUE Fox 8 New Orleans, uh, the article writer found the following comments, which have been transcribed with all spelling and grammar errors intact. And they've got four of them. All right. Well, I don't think it is cute or funny. As a matter of fact, it offends me. My God is and an awesome God. And I am I am so thankful for his love and care for me, ellipses. Also, I have several friends that this offends too. It needs to be taken down. Because you're offended, it has to go down. Right. Um, well, you know, all these um, anti-abortion ads in, in billboards and stuff that use babies to try and push their uh, pro-life agenda with guilt tripping, you know, that offends me. But you don't see me going up to one and demanding they take him down. Even though I think they should, but you're not seeing me getting in their face about it. Kind of like how you are. Ah. I refuse to like this post. Satin. Yes, it is spelled S A T I N. Satin is alive and well, and we as a nation need to stand up for Christianity. I agree with Jonah. Where is our freedom of speech? You never lost it. <laughs> Just saying. And. Oh yeah, and this third one, they. They they try to blame this on Obamacare. Uh, <laughs> well, Obamacare got read R E D E of freedom of religion and the fifth. No, it didn't. Motherfucker, do you even know what Obamacare does? Clearly not. I'm <laughs> guessing he's too busy porking his sister to figure it out. Oh, damn. Well, he's, he's gonna need some Obamacare for the STDs and the. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with people god damn and here's the last one the last the last comment i will help you burn it down olivia weeks uh, apparently somebody was suggesting to burn it down i showed this to tommy the other day and we said the same thing you did our religion is so quote-unquote offensive to them well their lack of it is offensive to me well good for you you know yo, know, go away what's good for us is good for them the way I see it, everyone should be allowed to believe what they believe, and if someone else doesn't like it, that's fine. Er not being made to participate. If I want to pray in public, I will. If you don't want to see it, look the other way. I have to turn the other cheek to things all the time. It's called being adult. Yeah, and, and, and you offering this other person to help burn it down is an adult thing to do, right? Because obviously, if you're recognizing that they have the same rights and stuff as long as you don't have to look at it then obviously that's being an adult when you offer to burn it down because you don't actually want them to have the rights you just want to pretend like other people have the same rights as you yeah pretty much and that's that's just not how it flies it isn't because hi just because we don't believe the same thing you do doesn't mean we deserve any less treatment doesn't mean that we can't have our billboards up there as long as they're not like patently uh, i don't want to say patently offensive because there are plenty of billboards out there that offend me that are not breaking any laws i i think that's kind of what i needed to go with there you know just not breaking any laws and so you know it's fine it's harmless you know i you know i see yeah. 
you, I mean, hell, you go up up and down I seventy over in Missouri. Holy shit, how many billboards for 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 religious services and for churches and for everything else do you goddamn see? All of them. Yeah, and it's just. I mean, there's even. I mean, I don't I don't know how much it is now, but there's even some spots where there's like there's a billboard for a church and then a billboard for a porn store. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much the the Midwest in general. Mm-hmm. Somebody will build a big giant cross and big big giant cross that they light up, and then they'll go to the porn places. Yes. Porn, porn everywhere. Yes. <laughs> porn and Jesus, Jesus and porn. Yes, and some people even combine the two. There, the two. There is like like the the uh, baby Jesus butt plug, for example. Uh, I want to say there's a Virgin Mary dildo. Or maybe it was Jesus on the cross dildo. So there, there is some... The crucifixion dildo? Yes! <laughs> I'm not going to Google search that, but please, t- somebody needs to, to tell me if this is a real thing. I think, not it. I, I not think it, it is. I, I think it is. It's been a while, but but I, I do seem to remember seeing a picture. <laughs> oh, lordy. Well, I know if I'd have seen a picture of it, I would either A, never forget it, or B, like do my very best to forget it yeah. at all costs with drugs and whatever else it took. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't kind of don't blame you there. Oh, but yeah, there is, there is some overlap there. And, and, but to get back to, to the whiny Christians that are whining about this billboard and, and everything else, your freedom of speech, again, your freedom of speech is not being infringed upon. Nobody is saying you have to not believe in your God anymore. We don't give a shit if you believe or not. We really don't. Okay? We don't. What we do care about is you forcing it into areas that it does not belong, such as in our public schools, in our public libraries, etc., etc., etc. So 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 that's where you do not need to to be forcing this kind of stuff. Now, as long as you're not doing that, we're fine. Uh, any any last thoughts? I, I, I got one more quick story. Do you guys have any other thoughts on this particular one? Negative. Negative. Uh, Christian whiny baby usual stuff. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Uh, speaking of whiny babies, mm, this last one, Florida. I, 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 no, not Florida. I'm sorry. This is Iowa. This is Iowa. A picky eater was jailed Tuesday for reportedly using a McDonald's McChicken sandwich as a weapon against his pregnant wife, according to a police report. Marvin, what? yeah, Marvin Tremaine, Hi, Marvin Tremaine Hill II, 21, admitted to police that he threw the sandwich at his wife because he doesn't like them. Hill a reasonable was, reaction. Yeah, of course. Hill was arrested for simple domestic assault and taken to the Polk County Jail. That's that's where the state drew me off because because we have a Polk County. Uh, Des Moines police met with Hill at the couple's home at the whatever. Hill told police that it was actually his wife who assaulted him. Hill said his wife woke him up around 1 p.m. with a McChicken in hand. He admitted to police that he became upset and threw the ch- sandwich at her, then picked up some of the bun and throwing at her again, that, throwing it at her again. Because, of course, I mean, you could be grumpy, but come on, dude. The woman went to the bathroom to clean herself up, but Hill followed her and began recording her using a cell phone, which he later shared with police. In the video, police saw the woman knock the phone out of his hands. Hill's wife had mayonnaise on her shirt and face on her shirt and face when officers located her. According to the woman, Hill had forcefully smashed the bun into her face. Police noted that the woman's nose was swollen and believed Hill was trying to entice the woman into knocking the phone out of his hands to make her appear aggressive, the report stated. Hill was arrested and his, and his weapons permit was confiscated, and, and he remains in custody at the Polk County Jail. What a douchebag! It's like what the fuck? It's bad enough when it, it's it's bad enough that you're attacking this woman with a chicken sandwich. Okay, you don't like the chicken sandwich? Fine, whatever. You know, just throw it to the you trash. You just say I don't want it. You don't throw it at the woman. Yeah. Jesus. You don't throw it at her, and and even if you do, you don't pick it up and try and do it again. I mean, it's a chicken sandwich, dude. Come on. I know McDonald's doesn't make that great of McChicken, but still. Yeah, it's just, or or if you really want, you know, give the Mc, you give the Mc, you give the McChicken to somebody who has a McDouble, they can make a McGangbang. <laughs> there you go. 
Problem solved. Everybody loses. Yes. <laughs> Although, I don't know. I like a McGangbang every now and then. Uh, I, 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 I blame Brad. Uh, Brad Jones, you're the one who got me into McGangbangs. Fuck you. <laughs> Except not really. You're all right. Oh, but... And then... It would, so Okay, so throwing the chicken sandwich at her, bad enough. Yeah. And then tried to make it look like it's her fault. Dude! That, that's that's low, man. That 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 is that is pretty goddamn low. And and my and, five-year-old niece would not do that. No, <laughs> I mean, trust me, soap opera villain, you are not, sir. Because that's something a soap opera villain would do. They would manipulate the situation and let to make them come out on top. And in soaps, it works. In reality, not so much. Although, to be fair, in soaps, they also deal with things like, oh, trying to take over the world with different Evil things. twins coming back from the dead. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, and weather machines, sometimes. Although, that, just that one time in the early 80s. Mm. But, yeah. Soap opera villain you are not, sir. And now you're sitting in jail because y you're dumbass. Um... So with that, we are about out of time for this week. Uh, Kira, thank you so much for coming on the show, and, and thank you for being a patron, man. Always happy to help. Yes, and um, and so if if you wanted to, if people wanted to find you and talk to you, you know, on the social medias or whatever, where could we find you? Uh, I'm on Twitter at Kira Kennedy HNR. I'm also on Tumblr, also at Kira Kennedy HNR. I'm also I also um, am part of. Two awesome sites. One is called peanutbutterdisaster.com. The other is leagueswordfish.blogspot.com. Ooh, nice. All right, and and if we want, and besides those, you also you said you have a Vimeo, right? Yep, that's where I've started uploading my videos because YouTube. Ah, uh, yeah, fuck YouTube. <laughs> I've, I've actually got a review. I'm just finishing up, and I'm not putting it on there because it's a Lionsgate movie. Lionsgate does not like when they put the movies that have their stuff in – not movies, but reviews that have yeah. their movies and stuff in them because they don't – It's they don't Sony understand. for me. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Kat, speak, speaking of uh, Lionsgate movies, I you know first one I did was a crossover with <gasps> – Kat, where can we find Ooh. you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at LabyrinthCat and Facebook.com slash NerdistCat. And you can find me on one of my other shows, one of my other podcasts, uh, What the Fuck on 1201beyond.com. And then my main show, Nerd to the Third Power, over on That Guy with the Glasses under the podcast tab. Or no, no, it's Channel Awesome now. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, it's officially ChannelAwesome.com. Oh, yes. Yeah, it, it, that's going to be a tough one to break for you, isn't it? Oh, God, I'm so, like, twice a week I say this stuff, and i I got to get myself out of the habit of that guy with the glasses. Yeah, because it's no longer that. It's now Channel Awesome, which, um, uh, too much white. Too much, too much white. white. Well, I mean, you're talking about people who do online reviews, so it's going to be a lot of white in this anyway. Uh, yeah. Um, so... It's a bunch of white people is what I'm saying. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So... At any rate, uh, if you wanted to find me on social media, you can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblers at gomer 21 X. If you want to find more of my stuff, previous shows, other videos, I do some gaming videos and all that good stuff, you can find that on nerdvice.com and, of course, my main site, rtgomer.com. And this week, I'm going to announce it here, uh, this week, probably a couple of days after this goes live on the site, I will be opening up auditions, and I encourage everybody to come and check it out. I won't be pulling on as many as I did last time because uh, I don't want to get too over overblown or anything because uh, we, well we see what some sites look like when they have just you know to to use a turn of phrase too many cooks if you will and now you all have that damn song in your head thank you you're welcome damn you Goma <laughs> uh, but but seriously uh, we, we are going to open them up this week and probably a couple of days like I said a couple of days after this goes live uh, I encourage you to come out and just just be warned for everybody who wants to audition I'm not going to be picking up quite as many this time because I don't want to get too over bloated so um, so it's going to be a little tighter but we do have a little bit of extra room if you, know, if you have some stuff you know, I, I encourage you to send in an audition but uh, that'll be going up on the uh, RT Gomer Prod. I, I think it's RT Gomer Prod uh, Tumblr. 
uh, you know, like I said, a couple of days after this goes up, just to be redundant so everybody understands it. <laughs> and of course, my Patreon stuff, that's in the bumper. Um, and it sounds a lot better than when I do it. I might have to do with the fact that some certain somebody does it. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. So Some of us have much better radio voices than others. Yes. Well, mine is not horrible. Yours is a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so with that, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you all next week. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the cat and Kara Kennedy signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to patreon.com slash beckyhop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.